Simon Nellis was a nature lover by heart. He fell in love with Australia and the beautiful surrounding ocean when he was traveling there six or seven years ago. He lived with his fiance in Wally Creek, South Sydney. Tragically, their wedding was postponed due to the coronavirus pandemic. Their wedding was only weeks away. They never had a chance to get married. Simon enjoyed swimming after work and often went for a swim in the warm waters between Little Bay and Malabar, East Sydney. Originally from Penzance in Cornwall, UK, Simon had served two tours in Afghanistan with the British Royal Air Force. He kept fit and entered the Malabar Magic Ocean Swim, for which he had been training on that fatal day. At that point of time, the state of New South Wales extensively protects its beaches, including where Simon was attacked from sharks. They deployed many different deterrents to protect the swimmers and surfers who frequently visited the beaches. Their shark mitigation program is thought to be the largest and most sophisticated in the world. Shark nets have been installed for nearly a century. An extensive shark tagging program is in operation. Sharks caught into the nets, particularly the more dangerous species such as great whites, tiger sharks, and bull sharks, are tagged with the tracker and relocated over a kilometer away. During busy summer weekends, when the beaches are at their most busy, drones and helicopters hover over the water, scanning for sharks. Shark sirens are sounded by lifeguards if a shark is spotted and people are ordered to leave the water. If dangerous sharks have posed a risk to the public, baited drum lines are used to try and capture it. In over a century, fatal shark attacks in Australia are recorded as less than one per year. The safety measures the authorities take in order to keep people safe appear to be working. However, this is something that many people feel strongly about. Ironically, Simon was very outspoken about the cruelty of shark nets and drum lines in one of his final Facebook posts. He stated, Shark nets and drum lines protect no one and kill all kinds of marine life each year. Simon was 35 years old and was at one with the marine environment. Everything about Simon was connected to the ocean in one way or another. He was a diving instructor and a member of Sydney Scuba Diving Social Club. He was a calm and patient instructor and was frequently telling his dive students to respect the ocean. He knew the risks associated with swimming in Sydney's waters, but his passion for adventure and the outdoors were what he lived for. Wednesday, the 16th of February 2022, Simon was swimming his usual training route near Little Bay. This bay is a short distance south of Malabar Beach, where he was hoping to compete in a charity fundraising swim the following weekend. Little Bay is a beautiful hidden gem south of Sydney Harbour. The sea is calm with clear waters and the golden sandy beach is sheltered from winds. It offers idyllic swimming conditions. Simon wore his wetsuit and entered the water. There were fishermen on the rocks and others were swimming or paddling in the sea. At 4.30 p.m. and less than 150 meters from the shore, an enormous great white shark swam up from the depths in a vertical attack. It exploded out of the water underneath Simon and grabbed him in his jaws. In a desperate attempt, Simon screamed out for help and dramatically tried fighting the shark jaws. The shark was reported to have been more than three meters long, and eyewitnesses described the enormous splash like a car hitting the ocean. Adult great white sharks mostly hunt marine mammals such as seals and sea lions. They are incredibly strong animals weighing up to a ton. Sharks have an excellent sense of smell and can detect electrical signals produced by marine animals. They are ambush predators, relying on the element of surprise to catch their prey. Typically, a great white shark will position itself below a seal or sea lion. It will then torpedo upwards, reaching speeds of up to 25 miles per hour. The sheer force of the shark strike can knock its prey clean out of the water before its serrated teeth of up to two inches long bite down. Horrifyingly, the shark bit down, tearing Simon's body in two. Shocked onlookers could do nothing but watch as Simon was killed within feet of the rocks of Bucking Point. His body was then dragged out to sea, and he was never seen again. One of the dozens of fishermen on the rocks at the time of the attack described the devastating scene. I heard a scream, and the shark was just chomping on his body, and the body was in half, just off the rocks here. It came back and swallowed parts of his body, and that was it. It disappeared. This desperately sad attack was vicious and frenzied. Locals who knew Simon and often greeted him as he took his daily swims said that it was unusual for swimmers in the area to wear wetsuits. The water was warm, and most bathers did not wear them. Experts have suggested that Simon in his black wetsuit was mistaken for a seal. From below the water surface, a silhouetted swimmer above in a wetsuit could easily look similar to a seal or sea lion. It is thought that due to the nature of a great white shark's hunting method, most attacks are because of mistaken identity. 
The sharks can sense a mammal swimming above them, but cannot clearly see the type of animal it is. Their speed and precision make it difficult for them to stop midway through an attack. Often, sharks who attack people will swim away after their first bite as soon as they realize that this isn't their normal prey. Immediately after the terrifying attack on Simon, the Coast Guard and lifeguards patrolled area in boats and on jet skis to try and find the shark. Smart drum lines were deployed in the location, too. These drum lines are long lines with baited hooks. When the bait is taken by a shark, it triggers a magnet, which in turn sends an alert via a solar-powered beacon to officials on shore. This gives advanced warning of a shark in the area. After fatal shark attacks, people often begin discussing culling sharks, but they are such an important marine species that a decline in their numbers could be devastating for the marine environment, and subsequently, humans. They are apex predators, and therefore, maintain the balance within the food chain. Areas where sharks are in decline have seen reductions in coral reefs, seagrass beds, and the loss of commercial fisheries. Each of these habitats is vital to a whole host of other species, not least the survival of human beings. Simon's family and friends have been left shocked and heartbroken by this attack. It was the first fatal attack in Australia in almost 60 years. It's devastating that someone who was so outspoken and passionate about the marine environment was killed far too young by a species he was trying to conserve. How to be shark safe Number 1. Don't swim or surf at night or at dawn or dusk. This is when sharks are most active. They are also more likely to misidentify you for prey when visibility is poor. Number 2. Don't swim alone. Sharks are more likely to attack a lone swimmer than those in a group. Again, mistaken identity could be the cause of this. A group of swimmers is less likely to look like a seal or sea lion. Number 3. If you have an open cut or wound, do not go in the water. Sharks are well renowned for their incredible sense of smell. Some species of sharks have a quarter of their brains dedicated to smell that can smell a drop of blood in the ocean from three miles away. Number 4. Remove jewelry before swimming in the ocean. Glinting rings or watches could be mistaken for fish scales and could attract a shark. Number 5. Stay away from fishing areas. Fishermen using bait and chum attract sharks. Also, areas where sewage or rivers enter the sea attract bait fish, which in turn attract sharks. Number 6. Excessive splashing, either by people or by dogs, can attract sharks and can confuse them into thinking that you or your pet are prey. Number 7. Steer clear of various areas where sharks like to hang out. These include the borders between reefs or sandbars in the open ocean. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more real animal encounters like this.